Yeah, it's cold here in Texas. It's time to shoot another install video. Today we're going to be working on a club car precedent. We're going to be installing an Avitas TSX 3.0 440 controller. Even though it's cold, that's why we have shops. Let's get this thing going. Okay, unlike some of my other videos where we installed AC kits, today we're going to be installing a DC controller. This is an Avitas TSX 3.0 440 DC controller. Now guys, we have two different versions. You have a 440 controller and then they make a bigger 600. So lots of people ask, what well, is it bigger? No, they're the same size. They look identical. So. Yeah, they look identical. You wanna see? Oh, it's all wrapped in bubble wrap, just the way I like it. It's the same size as a 440. They mount the exact same way. We're gonna show y'all how to put this in. Let's get going. All right, guys, before we get started, always remember safety first. Anytime you're gonna be working on a motor or a controller, always make sure to lift the rear of the cart, set it on jack stands. And then always make sure before you do any type of electrical work, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you've removed your positive and negative cables. That way we don't short anything out. You don't shock yourself. So keep that in mind. Safety first. This is all fun. Don't want anybody getting hurt. I hadn't had a, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say I've never had a cart take off of me this will be the time something happens. So, all right, let's go. So you can see that the club car precedent we're working with has four 12 volt batteries instead of six eight volt batteries. This car also comes with an OBC that you can see right there. It's not gonna be a problem. It's not gonna affect us putting in this 440 controller. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a mat or a blanket or something across these batteries. That way we don't chuck ourselves then we're going to take a T40 screw and we're going to pull out the black screw in the top of the lid. We're going to roll that panel back and set everything on top. That way we can get to our controller a lot easier. So one of the first things you want to do before working on any electrical golf cart is you want to go ahead and remove your positive and your main negative from your pack. It's no different on a club car if you have four 12s or six eights. Most of the time your battery main connections are going to be at the very end of the cells. So we've already got ours disconnected. Now let's jump onto the next spot. Now with our batteries covered up, we can take our T40 torque wrench and we could take out the main plate. All right, now that we got our plate out, our plate, now that we have our bolt out, we're gonna take our plate. And sometimes guys, these can be pretty stiff. Sometimes they're not so bad. The biggest thing is make sure you get all your wires pushed back. I might have to actually pull these batteries out. These 12 volts are hitting a whole lot heavier than that. Well, looks like I might have to pull these two batteries out. Well, as you can see, now that we have the two center batteries out, there's a lot more room. And whoever built this cart before this guy owned it certainly didn't do himself any favors. We'll probably go back in and clean a bunch of this mess up for him. But right now, let's focus on the controller. And now, you see, that just lays in there nice and neat. Now it's a lot easier to get to. All right. Now all we're gonna be doing is replacing this controller, so this shouldn't take us any time at all. Okay, so now that we have our plate laid down, we have our batteries out of the way, we're not gonna shock ourselves. First thing we wanna do, guys, this might look intimidating. It's really not. First thing you're gonna do is unplug this four prong Molex connector, you're not gonna need this. This will not, will not be going back in when we install the bigger controller. Then you're gonna have a 16 pin connector. 
we'll pop it out. And then you're gonna have an F1 and F2 cable. We're gonna pry those bad boys off. And they might be st stubborn and stuck on there. Once we get those out of the way, now we can get our big bolts out of the way. Guys, these take a half inch. You can use it with a socket or I'm gonna use a DeWalt. We're gonna take the black, the double black off first. And then the M, which is the white cable. We'll pull it off. And then the green and yellow, which is your B positive. We'll pull it off. Kind of get those pulled back to the side just a little bit so you can get in here and get this controller out. Now we're going to switch our socket over to a 10 millimeter. Like I said, you can do this with a socket wrench or you can do it with a DeWalt. You're going to reuse these screws, so do not lose those. I'm not going to be reusing this. And now, everything just comes out. So now that we have our 440 controller by Navitas, now guys, the 440 and the 600 are the exact same size. In fact, if you don't know, the only way to really tell is to look right here where you see TSX 3.0 440. That's how you know what size it is. Now guys, this drops right back in place to where our other controller was mounted. And we are just gonna use the existing bolt holes to lock this back. nice and tight okay now I am going to use a socket on these right here just because it is a brand new controller and I don't want to take the chance of stripping anything out guys these are also half inch bolts that you'll be pulling out of here make sure if your batteries aren't covered do not sit your wrench down on a battery you don't want to you do not want to take a chance in arcing and shocking yourself or melting a battery. That would not be fun. Alright, so we are going to start off with the B-, minus, which is going to be our double black cable. And guys, you might have to get that to stretch a little bit. Sometimes they're a little tight, but they do fit. those are good and snug now we're going to take out the bolt for the M this is going to be your white wire now all you have left is your B positive and that's going to be your yellow and green wires Okay, so all you're gonna have left is your blue and orange one. Orange goes to F1, and the blue will go to F2. All right, now that all of our big stuff is done, we've got all our field cables and all of our power cables in, now we're gonna be installing the Navitas harness for this cart, which is the 1510, 1515, Curtis IQ setup switch. Guys, this only plugs in one way. So push it in, lock it in. Now we have a spot for our OTF, and then we have a place for our 16 pin connector. And then all this is going to do is wire just clip into place. There it goes. We'll lock it into place. Now I'm not going to be running the OTF right now because we will be pulling this 440 back out and installing a 
AC kit with a 600 amp controller and then I'll show you how to run that OTF. So right now this is pretty much your basic setup. Now for this test and this video we're not going to be replacing the stock solenoid. I do recommend anytime you upgrade to a larger controller you always want to stay within 200 amps of your controller. So this being a 440 normally I would put a 200 amp solenoid in. But since this is just for testing and, other, uh, and video, we're going to leave it alone right now, and then we'll come back to it. So now that everything's buttoned up, everything looks secure, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put everything back into place. And I love how the clip cards never want to drop back in on the first try. Get that in there, get buttoned up. Let's get some batteries in it. Okay, so I went and made a couple passes around the block. First thing I noticed, the cart does accelerate a lot quicker, which is good. It's kind of what I was going for. In the video, it shows I got it to about 19 or 20. I actually get a, I got it up to about 22 to 23. And it wasn't until I got back to the house and I realized that there's three bushings in the rear leaf springs that are completely gone. So that's going to affect speed. I had two tires that were low. You know that's going to affect your speed not to mention the front suspension it's a spindle lift the geometry was completely off the tires were towed in really bad uh or not towed in i should say they were cambered in really bad and the toe was off after i checked it so i honestly think that cart probably would have went 25 miles an hour had everything been properly set up on the cart uh, guys you got to think of a golf cart as a race car when you're talking about speed one little thing can get you and it can knock you down a mile to two to three miles an hour properly inflated tires correct alignment you know if you have bad bushings that's going to throw the cart in a bunch of different angles that's kind of the stuff you got to watch out for so it's a good thing we're replacing all this so in the next video we're going to be doing a six inch lift new hd springs all new bushings 
then we'll go test it again on the 23 inch tall tires. I hope y'all got something out of this video. Guys, make sure to stick around. We got more stuff to come on this. We're gonna install the AC kit on this. I've got a club car DS build we're coming out with here pretty quick. So stick around. Thanks for joining in. Remember to go check out our Facebook page, Golf Carts Modified, and follow us on TikTok and Instagram if you want to, if you got time, no pressure. Guys, thanks again. Hope everybody had a good time. Hope you learned a little bit. Remember, go modify.